Hey kids, this is Ivan. How you doing? Well, I just finished making a video. In fact, I'm uploading it right now as we speak. And I did not know it was outside because I've been sick all weekend. This Monday, I was out of work today because I'm sick. I'm just, it's some kind of flu thing, but I'm not sure what the heck it is. Hopefully I can get to go to work tomorrow. But I was unaware of what was outside. And so my girlfriend had gone someplace. She comes back and she says, hey, you got a spy camera. So I got something here. And I'm not sure what the heck it is. Because I don't recall. Um... I'm supposed to get anything. A couple, couple ideas, but it's, it's from Lightning Source. And so we're going to open it up. And I don't think I'm going to use the evil looking utility knife because I think, based on how this is wrapped, I can just kind of open it. And let's see what's going to come out of here. Yeah. Uh, huh. Ah, okay. I thought. I thought this might be it. So I got, I got prepared for a second. Woodfall. Dark Fantasy mini setting. It is, it is an OSR type product. And it's something I got a message a little while ago from a, a listener, a viewer, a viewer. <laughs> Let's see. And this guy Shane is, uh, goes by the moniker of Lazy Lich. And he asked, um, you know, he said he's followed my channel for a while, likes my videos. Thanks, man. And he made a dark fantasy mini, mini setting last year called Woodfall. And he asked, him, could he send me a print copy? I said, sure. And apparently, it's, you know, he sent me a Kickstarter link. The Kickstarter's already been fulfilled uh, or, or, you know, uh, it, it won. <laughs> it got funded. Uh, he got, uh, he sent stuff out, uh, you know, it was a su successful Kickstarter. So it's not a promotion of a Kickstarter. So I, I checked this thing out and uh, I may tell you about it. But I uh, figured I'd open it on camera. And uh, we'll talk about some Woodfall. Nice hardcover book. Alrighty, so I've had a chance to read Woodfall now after receiving it a few days ago. I got a chance to finally you know, go through it, went through it in a couple days, and so now I'll talk about it. Uh, it's about 93 pages. I think the last page is just a logo, uh, <laughs> the Lazy Lich logo. It looks like he wrote uh, the entire thing himself and did all the artwork himself. I, I find there's a, a editing credit to Tansy for editing credit and support. Um, there's a few other acknowledgments in here in terms of backers and somebody did some research. Uh, I think uh, a lot of um, like Linux uh, developers, and it looks like layout developers, so it looks like he pretty much did a lot of the stuff himself in this book. Um, and, you know, for a for self-done project, it's pretty darn good. Like, I, I couldn't find, I think I found two instances of, it, he looks like he used the alternate version of a word with a, a different spelling rather than the one that was intended, as far as I could tell. The way it read, I'm like, hmm, it's probably, probably he probably meant to use the other word. Um, I think, I think I found two. And I think I found like one typo, but whatever it was, it wasn't really glaring. It might have been an odd sentence or something. But overall, you know, I couldn't find like, you know, a bunch of errors in here. There's certainly companies that uh, have giant budgets that uh, didn't do as good of a job as Lazy Lich did with this. So, you know, really, you know, the stuff I, I kind of have like, I read it with a lot of scrutiny and I really didn't find uh, very much. The physical quality of the book is great. This is the hardcover version. Uh, I think it's available on drive through I went and looked, and so you can buy just the PDF or the hardcover book or the softcover book, or I think it comes bundled with the PDF uh, as far as uh, that's concerned. Um, and then the book goes on, and it's, it's, it's billed as a dark fantasy mini setting. I'm going to argue with that a little bit or give you a different take, and it, it's it's a mini setting. It's a fantasy mini setting. I'm going to... To me, it's more of a high fantasy mini setting with a, a certain type of flavor with some kind of dark around the edges. And he, he tells you in this book, too, take... Take whatever you want out of this book, change it, you know, uh, discard it, put your own thing in here, put your own spin on it. You're going to have to put a lot of your own spin on this because it is meant to be system neutral. So there's not a lot of mechanics in here. There's a lot of um, things that you're going to need to fill in all the blanks, which is not a bad thing. In, in many ways, it reminds me of some of the Judges Guild modules I had back in the day, which I wish I still had. This, this gives you a little more information sometimes. Um, but it, it, it's very system neutral. It's very open-ended. It's there's a lot of things where you're going to breathe some life mechanically into what's going on here, which is not a bad thing because this is a book of a lot of inspiration. So it, it, um, it like you said, it's meant to be kind of dropped into your own fantasy setting or it can be one on its own, but it's a miniature setting. It's, it's the village of Woodfall. It's the surrounding countryside, which is really kind of this very inhospitable forest and swamp. And 
then it's ties to a local kingdom, which is really kind of left up to you, like what this local kingdom is. And the idea that the local kingdom, th these people are existing like in opposition to the local kingdom. They are outlaws. The, the village of Woodfall is, uh, they are persona non grata. <laughs> they, they are bad people. But they're not really bad people. The king just doesn't like them. He's wanted to uh, evict them from the land, to get rid of them. And there's a struggle going on with that. So it's a uh, it's a sandbox. It's a hex crawl, if you will. Even you know, there's a great table of contents here because there's a lot of information in this book. It gives you a, a nice little hex map with all kinds of symbols, and, and there's various factions and clans and uh, things in the swamp. And there's some random uh, random encounter tables. And this book is full of random encounter tables or random charts, I should say. Uh, it gives you this kind of um, kind of like uh, philosophy about like how the game is, is supposed to be run or how he, he uh, suggests it's run. And then it goes, you know, head on to all sorts of stuff that's going on in this setting. Lots and lots of, uh, lots and lots of tables, lots and lots of information. Uh, he's got art throughout the book and there's not tons and tons of art, but the art sometimes is flavorful, but very often it's very useful because it conveys information that's not in the text because there's, you know, the book is pretty jam-packed. And I think the page count would be a lot higher if he tried to convey some of this information he conveyed through the art in the text. So it's actually kind of a useful, um, uh, useful use <laughs> of, of art. Um, and I, I love this one thing. He's got, a, he's got a rumor table about Woodfall. And it's the typical rumor table where things are true or false. There's only one thing that doesn't say whether it's true or false. And I thought to myself, this must be a typo. I'm like, no, it's not. This is kind of like, this is funny. Uh, this guy has a sense of humor that, that comes out throughout the book. And it's rumor number two. The place is full of low-life scum. <laughs> Never says whether that's true or false, which I think is awesome. There's a, um, a whole bunch of, why go to Woodfall? There's a D30 table of why would you go to you, uh, Woodfall? Or at least 30 different reasons. So, um, once again, you know, what happens in this book over and over again is it's a bunch of inspiration. It's a bunch of hooks. It's a bunch of ideas. It's a bunch of seeds. So it tells you about the history of Woodfall. It gives you a little map of the town itself in some kind of detail. Uh, gives you a history of Woodfall Village and the surrounding um, area. It gives you this uh, look into the economy itself. It talks about the legal system of Woodfall. And this is really kind of an interesting thing. Um, there, were, there were different parts of this book that I was reading. I'm thinking, you know, I'm not sure if I'm really going to like this. But the more I read it, the more it grew on me because I started to understand the conceits of this game. And I stopped trying to shoehorn it into something that I would necessarily run or would be my first uh, inclination to run. Because I was thinking of Dark Fantasy. I'm thinking of Lamentations of the Flame Princess. And I'm reading this, and it's a very different uh, sort of thing. Uh, but there is this tone, you know, um, of this game. Because I'm going to call this game, like, high fantasy. It's it's kind of got this, I, I can't quite get it. It's kind of got this Harry Potter vibe, but not really. It's got a vibe that's very similar to, but less zany than Xanth. And that was my guilty pleasure years and years ago. I'm not, I can't remember how many decades. Was it 30 years ago? Piers and Anthony was writing those books. Uh, you know, it's got sort of that feel to it. Um, it's got a, it's a very self-contained um, kind of uh, fantasy um, vibe to it. I mean, he says you can drop into your own fantasy world, and I understand that, that that's possible. However, I think that it probably works better as a self-contained sort of campaign because there are a lot of conceits that are very, um, they're a little unique. And there's something I think you kind of spoil the vibe of Woodfall if you start to mess with that too much and try to shoehorn it into a more um, standard fantasy campaign and what have you. But there's a legal system, and it's pretty interesting because there's, there's something about Woodfall itself. Uh, it, it's a commune. It's a little socialistic. The, the dark themes in this game deal with things like fairy, the world of fairy versus humans, um, uh, oppression. Um, exploitation, class issues, things like that. And it's not a game that's like really heavy duty about that, but that pervades the entire uh, setting over and over again. In the village of Woodfall, in the, in the swamp, there's a lot of the, the, uh, the disadvantaged, there's a lot of the people that are being oppressed. There are, um, I'll, you know, I'll get back to some parts of it, but there's, even in the magic system itself, I mean, there, there are things where monsters contain spell components. Um, and one of the most sought-after spell component in the entire world is the the, um, the flesh of a dryad, which are made of wood in this. And they, they make the best ones. 
You know, so a sentient being is being hunted down, almost exterminated, because they make really good wands. Uh, so it's it's like exploitation on, on steroids. Um, so it's pretty 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 interesting. There are um, some things like I one of the things I thought I wasn't going to like right away was there's a mask shop. I'm like, oh, there's a magic shop. There's a magic you can buy magic items here. Um, once again, there's a certain um, it's, it's kind of a Xanth feel, but not really. Uh, there's something else I've, I've read which which has that sort of feel to it. Uh, there's a very interesting inn. It has great rumor tables. It has great um, uh, NPCs. You know, one of the things he's done in this game as well is there are some very fleshed out NPCs, and not like super fleshed out, you know, there's, they don't say too much about each NPC, but it tells you what they want, what they fear, the plot hooks around them. Um, these are like the, the crooked in regulars, and there's not too many of them. Later on, you find uh, non-player characters and other people that might be wandering around in the swamp area, in the forest, and it lets you know just a little thing about them that gives you this this kind of hook or this inspiration like what kind of person are they are they deluded you know what's been going on with them for for a long period of time do they have something really odd really unusual that sort of thing there's there's plenty of like just you know little little bits of inspiration do they have stats no they might he might tell you what their class is sort of or what their profession is you have to fill in the rest so there's lots of gossip lots of rumors lots of ways to get you out uh, someplace else to give you information there is a uh, a system of ravens, you know, which which uh, transmit messages throughout the throughout the kingdom, which is kind of kind of fun, just how that works. Uh, a lot of the game deals with necromancy, and not in the really bad icky way, but there's a whole system of necromancy that exists in the kingdom or in the town of Woodfall, um, and just how the game handles necromancy itself is really really interesting. Uh, so I do like that. Once again, we find some um, some fairies, some hirelings. Um, there's this great NPC lists uh, that he has here. Um, some of the NPCs, some of the some of the um, the um, information he gives you about the factions and the 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 leaders, the important people in the uh, the various clans or factions in the swamp and in Darkwood, the surrounding area. He conveys this information through the pictures of the NPCs. So he doesn't give you a description of the NPC, there's a drawing of the NPC. He doesn't give you a description of these monsters, there's drawings of the monsters and of the uh, the main um, movers and shakers in these factions. And it doesn't tell you anything about them. This guy looks like he might be a vampire. vampire. Is he a vampire? I'm not really sure. He's got one, He's got an eye patch. This monster looks really bizarre. Um, and once again, he tells you change whatever you want, but it, it just gives you this bit of information. And you are, once again, it's kind of this little bit of inspiration rather than writing this paragraph about what the person looks like. He, she gives you a little picture. And, you know, I'm not always up for art telling me what's, what's going on, but I kind of like this. Um, he's got this great faction chart here, which I, that's one of the only things I wish is he actually he uses the symbols for each faction. And I wish he'd actually put the name of the faction uh, in there as well, because it's tough to, you have to kind of flip back and forth to figure, okay, what does this symbol mean? Um, and if you go by the top, you read down, and it tells you what this faction thinks or, or what their concern is with each other faction in the swamp. So it gives you this relationship map. There's also a, a sample relationship map on uh, one of the pages. So when you when you can take five NPCs, you pick them out, you create your own. You can put each one of them in the circle, and it kind of gives you this uh, it's a bunch of arrows going back and forth and tells you, well, who's having a secret affair with who, and who works with who, and which ones aren't speaking, and which ones betrayed whomever. And you can, you know, it's kind of this inspiration, once again, to make up another relationship chart for a bunch of other NPCs. But it's this quick and down and dirty way of kind of creating um, uh, bonds and uh, um, what have you between all the people. So I, I like that. You know, once again, just every page has something really cool on it. Uh, then there's, there's various factions in here. There's, there's the Hermit Druid. There's a um, bizarre uh, group of goblins, bizarre groups of frogmen, the Revolutionary course, uh, Corpse Council. There's you know, these, these various monsters and what have you that, that exist in there. Um, he also gives you, um, you know, a bunch of, a list of unique or monsters that are kind of uh, unique to this setting, uh, including one of my favorites, which I had to actually text Eric and said, did you, uh, did you see this? And I'm not sure if I can find this one here. I guess bloat zombies. And if this isn't the tip of the tip of the hat to Eric Blow, I'm not sure <laughs> what is, but uh, that was pretty awesome. But there's there's unique monsters uh, to the setting, unique plants, um, unique magics, uh, um, item components, a lot of interesting treasure. There's a lot of interesting odd items you can find in the um, area, which 
you're not really sure what, is, what does this really mean. Some of them seem to be very significant based on other things that are uh, stated in the book, but it's not 100% sure if, that, if that's, you know, really, really um, true. It's stuff that will, can make the players think, can give you some inspiration. There's even an Appendix N, suggested reading, <laughs> which I thought was pretty cool. And there are, there are timelines. Um, their event uh, ideas, but there are timelines for, for various of the, um, the factions and groups in this area um, because it's, it's a dynamic setting, which I, I really appreciate it. Sometimes it, he even has things where if the first time you visit these people, this will happen. The second time you visit, this is what's been going on. The third time, this is going to be going on. And so there's lots of um, information here about what's going to go on over time, unless the adventurers do something to stop it, thwart it, you know, get involved. There's even things in here, I know I'm making the video longer than I wanted to, but oh well. There's stuff in here where it, it says, okay, if you want to join this group, and there's several groups that it says, if you want to join this group, this is what you have to do to join this group. And this is what will happen. And this is going to be, you know, the uh, expectations put upon you. So it, once again, it is a very, very open, do what you want uh, sort of thing. It's set up as a sandbox. Um, so I do like that. It is is definitely something that you know, like I said, it's it's very high fantasy. It's 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 got a certain flavor to it. There are basic conceits here. It has its own, not magic system, but th there are things that you know. There are wands have components, and you put various components together, you will make a wand that does this. There are, there are cores in many monsters which have powers which you want because you can make use them to do things. There are um, various spell potion components, uh, various plants do certain things. There is a cure for a certain malady which requires all sorts of items scattered throughout this entire area. Um, so it is, like I said, at the end of the day, it's something that I think works better. Or if, you know, um, I already go ahead and run this tomorrow, I would want to make it its own self-contained area rather than try to shoehorn it into another, another campaign. Uh, rather than do the work to kind of mess with it too much because I think it has its own vibe. Uh, but it is it is very high fantasy, and it is a little it's a little zany around the edges. But I think it uses that zany to kind of look at, or you can look at some of these social issues that he's shoehorned in there, in terms of all the oppression and the the uh, the um, you know the um, what do you what do I say? all that all that nasty stuff, all the exploitation, uh, even in the class issues and all that sort of stuff. So it's an interesting book. So it's something that, like, at first, like I said, when I first started reading through parts, I'm like, I'm not really sure if I'm going to like this. The more I got into it, the more information that was in here, the more I started to wrap my head around exactly what he was doing with the setting, and the more I liked it. So it is definitely something that you're going to have to do some work once you get it, because it is a lot of, um, it's, it's a lot of inspiration. It's a lot of seeds. You're going you're to have to do some stat work to actually make the thing um, make the thing work. But the good news is you can do it with so many different systems. And, you know, you don't have to worry about converting the stats because they're not in there yet. And there's enough room in, in the various villages and the various factions and the various NPCs that you can kind of make them what you want. So I like it. Woodfall. You know, this may or may not be your cup of tea, but I enjoyed it.